Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> the uh, key to successful PD program is to have a very safe uh, and long-lasting access to the peritoneal cavity. Uh, but we should remember, uh, Sham uh, Sundar said that it's a very simple procedure, can be done as an outpatient, but it's a very crucial procedure because uh, catheter-related complications still occur and almost 20% of the patients uh, have to be shifted from PD to maintenance hemodialysis as a result of catheter-related problems. It is actually as important as uh, vascular access for, uh, 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 for hemodialysis. There is decreasing incidence of peritonitis and now uh, the catheter-related complications, uh, they are another important uh, 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 issues and problems which, are, which have to be kept in mind. Uh, I am going to uh, uh, also show some of the uh, aspects of the hardware which actually we are dealing with uh, because if you want to decide uh, uh, and put all these catheters yourself, uh, you should know uh, different aspects of the catheters and the different uh, uh, techniques which you are going to use. In US, uh, if <coughs> today only 4 to 5 percent of catheters are actually inserted by nephrologists. And uh, some of you must have read in PDI a few years back, there was a, a review by one of the surgeons <coughs> who uh, has made a case why PD catheters should be inserted by surgeons rather than by the nephrologist. Because the data from US has shown that uh, if nephrologists put PD catheters, more and more patients can be initiated uh, on PD. This is the uh, tank of catheter which we know with two cuffs, one is the subcutaneous and the deep cuff and the connector, this is the intra-abdominal segment uh, which is in the peritoneum and these are different types of catheters you must be aware, uh, the uh, uh, curled uh, catheter and then this is the Missouri catheter which is much more complicated and the swan uh, neck catheters, most of us are using either swan neck catheters or the straight catheters and there is another catheter with the disc at the end, the whole, these two catheters, life cat and Missouri have to be inserted surgically. The straight tank off and the uh, uh, swan neck catheters, uh, they can be inserted easily uh, by the percutaneous route, uh, but the other catheters uh, uh, need a surgical approach. Uh, at present there is no data to show that one type of catheter is superior to the other. Uh, in terms of their life and complications, they are almost similar, but there are people who give reasons, because if you have catheters uh, who have uh, discs or who are curled, the hypothesis is that they would not migrate, uh, uh, but in, 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 in usual randomized trials, uh, hardly any difference has been shown. Uh, this <coughs> is the... Uh, diagrammatic representation after the catheter has been put in. Uh, this is the subcutaneous cuff and this is the deep cuff and then this is the tunnel. If you are using a swan neck catheter, you have to have a curved tunnel. Uh, and this is the uh, uh, intraperitoneal portion of the catheter with the tip uh, 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 just anterior to the rectum and the holes here. And the same thing is shown uh, uh, in a section here. This is the uh, uh, superficial cuff, uh, which is about two centimeter inside the exit. Uh, uh, and this is the deep cuff, which is in the abdominal wall in the uh, rectus sheath. And then this is the uh, intraperitoneal portion. And uh, this is the uh, titanium adapter and after the catheter has been put in, uh, this is how it looks like. The catheter implantation techniques uh, uh, can be 
divided into three types. One is the dissection technique. The other is uh, just like a Seldinger's guide wire technique, the way you put the uh, internal jugular cannulation. And the third is laparoscopic technique. All these three techniques can be done by the nephrologist. And I, I, the, I'm not going to talk about the laparoscopic technique because uh, uh, the ash uh, uh, has miniaturized the laparoscope and has made it in a way that it can be used by the nephrologist. But not many people are using uh, the ash laparoscope for putting the catheters. I would only concentrate mainly on the uh, percutaneous technique and try to show some of our uh, experience. Uh, this can be performed by the nephrologist. It's a simple technique, but the person doing it should be doing it continuously and should be competent. The minimum number of insertions which have been advised, advocated uh, by the American International Nephrology setups is 20 uh, PD catheter insertions before you can really put these catheters independently. The other important thing is, is trial conditions are essential. You should have an environment like an operation theater. Though it is called a bedside insertion, it is not a bedside insertion. It has to be done in an OT environment because uh, these are the catheters which are going to last for uh, the access for PD. The deep cuff should be in the musculature <coughs> of the interior of the abdominal wall. I'm just going to make some of the uh, important uh, uh, points uh, if you're going to put it. The deep cuff should not be in the peritoneum. It should be in the musculature. And subcutaneous cuff, I already explained, it should be two centimeter inside, at least from the exit uh, side. And the exit side should be pointing outside and down. The two basic techniques are uh, initially when we started, even our surgeons were using the tank of trocar for putting the catheters. And the other technique which now uh, we are putting most of our catheters is by Seldinger's guide wire technique by using a peel away sheet, the way uh, internal jugular is put. This is uh, very similar to the split sheet technique. Uh, guide needle is passed into the peritoneal cavity, then you put the guide wire through the needle, the needle is removed and then you dilate the tracts. You use two or three dilators and then you put the peel away sheet, just like what Hemant has shown. Uh, the peel away sheet also has a dilator inbuilt. And then once you have dilated into the peel away sheet, you put the PD catheter. Uh, I Sometimes you can straight away put the catheter and sometimes you can harden it by putting a, a metallic uh, uh, line in it. And then you peel away the sheet and the catheter is inside. Uh, these are the uh, different dilators which uh, could be useful and the basic surgical instruments are not very really complicated. Uh, uh, this is to make the tunnel. Uh, I generally don't use these uh, trocars because sometimes they damage the vessels. Uh, we can actually very easily use the uh, much less uh, traumatizing instruments to make you on the track. I'm not going to go into the peritoneoscopic uh, insertion. Uh, we have the Vitec uh, peritoneoscope with the ash and device, uh, which can be used uh, by the nephrologist, but it doesn't give you the same result as the classical laparoscopic technique. Because in the classical laparoscopic technique used by surgeons, uh, you are putting it real time, and then you can do so many other things. You can anchor the catheter, you can see where the catheter is. Here you put the laparoscope, initially you see the abdomen, you decide where you want to go in and after that uh, you put the catheter. So I would not go much into this uh, and just show you some of the uh, dissection techniques and the, uh, uh, and the peel away. The other important thing which you should keep in mind that there are two important vessels which can get damaged when you this is a simple procedure <coughs> but i can tell you 
Uh, once I remember when I was in training, uh, one of the colleagues, uh, he put the catheter, that time we used to do speed by stiff catheters, and as soon as he put the catheter, the blood started coming out. And the catheter had actually gone into a very major vessel. So though it's a simple procedure, but one should be careful uh, because rarely some of these complications can occur. There are these vessels running here, uh, especially the epigastric artery branches, and these are the safe points where these vessels are avoided, either in the linea alba or lateral to the uh, rectus sheath. Uh, when you are doing assessment of these patients, the other important thing is you should uh, take these patients off antiplatelet drugs because many times these are diabetics who are on aspirin, so they should be stopped. And then you also look for, sometimes they have hernia and they have been missed. And many times these patients are in supine position, so the best thing is they should be made to stand. You should look for even small hernia. If there is a hernia there, then I think uh, a nephrologist should not insert these catheters because you would need uh, hernial repair and the surgeons are best uh, uh, for it. The part preparation is uh, 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 also very important, the shaving and enemas and also ha looking for any previous uh, scar. Uh, where is the belt line? This is another important thing. The exit site should not be on the belt line. So depending on the belt line, you should plan your uh, 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 surgery either above or below the belt line. So it may differ in different individuals and sometimes you may have to go a little lower and uh, above. And this is the uh, trocar which we used to use earlier. Uh, I have totally given it up uh, and uh, and this, this is the tunneler. Even I'm not using uh, the, such a big tunneler for coding. You make an incision uh, in the midline, two centimeter inferior to the umbilicus in the linea alba. Uh, some people do it uh, in the lateral margin of the rectus muscle. But remember that that is the place where sometimes these vessels are running. And then first you put the priming needle and create uh, 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 put some dialysate fluid inside and create ascites. After you have created uh, ascites by infusing about 2 liter of uh, uh, dialysate fluid uh, and then uh, you perforate the linea alba with the trocar. Uh, and then after that uh, 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 you put the PD catheter uh, through that uh, trocar. I will just show you, this is the uh, patient lying down and then uh, you, I generally like to go in the linear alba, uh, but we have no problem because we have all the uh, facilities, if there is any little bit of ooze uh, that can be, we have a pottery available. And this is the local anesthesia being given and the incision being made. and the needle has been put in and through the, this is very similar to the classical uh, QPD which we used to do. Uh, through this needle the uh, fluid is uh, 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 infused and the infusion should be painless and rapid because sometimes uh, the infusion, could, especially in an obese uh, patient in the uh, uh, subcutaneous uh, Space where it would be painful and it would not be very free. And after this here you have the uh, trocar being uh, pushed in and through the uh, trocar you have the uh, PD catheter being which has been stiffened and then you remove the two prongs and you have the catheter inside. The uh, idea is that the deep cuff is actually in the musculature of the uh, rectus sheath. It should not be in the peritoneum. And then you anchor it. And after that you decide the uh, exit site. And through the uh, uh, this tunnel 
you make uh, the uh, tunnel is very similar to the tunnel uh, hemodialysis catheter uh, being inserted and then you stitch it up. So it's, uh, it's reasonably simple if you are, uh, if you have had, you have put acute PD catheter and you have had some training, uh, then I think it should be not very difficult. But you have to be committed and you should keep on doing it. The other thing which we have done at our center for last three years is that we have this uh, international uh, area which is, uh, uh, is actually a fully uh, sterile OT environment with availability of CM because Himant is right that now uh, uh, imaging and continuous real time uh, is even important for PD catheter uh, insertion. I will just show you. And what we found that uh, since this sort of interventional nephrology and critical care facilities available, the uh, PD insertions, the tunnel catheter insertions, their number has gone up. And uh, most of the PD insertions uh, are being done now for last two years by the nephrologists. And this is the uh, peel away sheet which we are using and this is very similar to the, <coughs> to the hemodialysis. Uh, but we don't need to have any valve in this because that problem is not there and this is the guide wire. And this set is uh, easily available. Because I read a paper in PDI where, uh, where they have said uh, that in some of the countries the peel away sheet is difficult to get. But at least I think in India uh, it's freely available. Here I will show that how we are using uh, the C arm that every step uh, you can actually uh, do imaging to know that your needle is inside, the guide wire is there and as you are dilating uh, and putting the catheter, you can actually uh, image it and you are very sure where you are and ultimately the catheter uh, where it is positioned. So I think the having a C arm in your area is really of great help and since we are also putting <coughs> tunnel catheters, uh, it's, it's a very useful uh, facility. Uh, I would just and uh, we have analyzed our data and uh, this is about 1200 uh, dissection technique uh, 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 PD catheter insertions compared to 230 uh, percutaneous insertions which we did in last uh, uh, three years and compared the immediate uh, and the uh, technique survival and actually there is no difference. Uh, the only interesting thing which we got uh, uh, that uh, uh, in patient where this percutaneous peel away sheets technique was used, uh, the immediate uh, complications in terms of hematoma and hemorrhagic returns were actually less. And the other advantage which we had is you can actually immediately start uh, uh, these patients on uh, uh, PD, especially in a lying down position, there was no leakage because the uh, the entry point is uh, so uh, small and it is so snugly fitting and after you have repaired and uh, fitted the deep cuff, uh, there is no leakage at all. So I think uh, I would end by uh, telling at least the younger nephrologist that this is an area in which more and more of uh, us should get into and this would really increase even the United States where you have the dedicated uh, vascular access surgeons and even surgeons put in PD catheters, they have shown that if the nephrologist puts the PD catheters, the number of uh, patients going for PD uh, has a very, uh, has suddenly increased. So I think I would end here and if there are any other inputs and or questions, I would be glad to answer.